And then we have Shockwave in his pretty damn excellent Autobot long arm robot mode. Or, or should I say long arm prime? Because yes, the Autobots of Animated really are that stupid that they allowed a Decepticon infiltrator to advance to the position of Prime. Now, in, in Animated, the position of Prime is something different than it's been before. It's not something that only one Autobot is assigned with. In past continuities, the Primes have always been Autobots that have been allocated the creation matrix. Whereas in Animated, the Primes are just the heads or the, uh, the top Autobots in their field. So you have Optimus Prime who is a chief space bridge technician, and Sentinel Prime, who is uh, one of the, the chiefs of the Elite Guard, etc., etc. And Longarm Prime is the chief of Autobot Intelligence, even though he is actually a Decepticon. And this is oh, its one of the things I love about the animated show, actually. And it's something that it does better than any of the Transformers continuities that have ever gone before, including... Beast Wars and Generation, especially Generation 1. Much as I love Generation 1, it does have some really serious faults, and this is one of them. The Decepticons in Animated are so wonderfully capable and intelligent and monstrously powerful. They are a genuine threat. And that's something they've never really been before. And Shockwave is one of the most capable of the bunch, it seems. No wonder that Megatron trusts him so much. But yes, there he is in long arm mode. And it's pretty damn impressive considering that this toy has four other modes. It's coherent. There's hardly any kibble unless you count this thing on the back and that can be taken off. He's monstrously poseable. He doesn't retain all of the poseability of his shockwave mode, but you know what, considering the amount of poseability he does have, it doesn't matter. He's certainly more poseable than a lot of Transformers that only have one alt mode. So, blah. But the really impressive thing about this mode is how different and distinct it is from Shockwave's robot mode. It's certainly much more different than the two vehicle modes are. And I also, I love, I love his face sculpt. I think his face sculpt is absolutely wonderful. And check out his little Autobot symbol there. He also has these wonderful little sculpted hands. If you look on the inside of these things here, there are sculpted fingers and whatnot. So he has functioning hands in this mode. That's very, very nice. I would go so far as to say, as this is without a doubt the most successful of all of the Transformers that have ever had both Autobot and Decepticon modes. There's quite a, a, a long line of them, actually. They begin with... Um, Punch and Counterpunch in Generation 1, who was an Autobot infiltrator who could transform into a Decepticon. Bit of a shit toy, to be honest. All you really do to get the alternate mode is turn him around and flip out some bits. And the Decepticon mode is on the back, which is a bit crap. And he also only has one alt mode, so... Technically, the minute he transforms into his vehicle mode, the, Decept you know, the clever Decepticon should say, Hang on, I've seen an Autobot with that alt mode, and it looks exactly the same. Uh, then you have Double Dealer who is gorgeous. He really, he's another Generation 1 Transformer, a Decepticon, um, but not one who is sworn to the Decepticon cause. He's sort of out for himself. He's a mercenary, and he is beautiful. He's an absolutely stunning Transformer. Then the Sideways from Armada. Not bad. Not fantastic, but not bad. And then you have this guy, who I'd argue is the most successful of the lot. He is absolutely superb in this mode. And this is another one of the modes I like to display him in. He stands beautifully in this mode. And he can pose very well. So the only thing I would say is that with this new colour scheme, the, the black, the purple and the red, he really looks Decepticon. He does not look very Autobot in this colour scheme at all. But that really is a matter of incidence. Right, then on to his final mode, and what is certainly one of the very best. He looks awesome in his Shockwave robot mode. And there is animated Shockwave in his absolutely gorgeous Decepticon robot mode. Now one of the things that struck me from the moment I started seeing pictures of this guy is how much effort they put into making the two robot modes so incredibly distinct. Although they obviously share common elements like the colour scheme and the design on the chest and whatnot, 
they're so different from one another. Not only in terms of their anatomy and whatnot, but also in terms of proportion. Whereas long arm is small, stunted, and looks quite broad, Shockwave is tall and insectile and lanky and looks very, very alien and sinister. I love that. And, of course, he carries over certain design elements from Gen 1 Shockwave, uh, most noticeably the gorgeous Cyclopean one eye. That is fantastic. And the light piping in that eye is wonderful. If you put him in front of a light, that thing glows. And I love the head in particular more than anything. It moves beautifully. It's, on, it's not on ball joints. It's just multiple jointed so that it can move anywhere. And you also notice long arms hands become these gorgeous multiple articulated claws. That is wonderful. He looks so much more sinister than long arm. And if anything, in this mode he's even more articulate. He will pose in any way you want. He is also one of the tallest Decepticons you'll get from the animated line. He's much taller than Megatron, although of course he isn't quite as broad. And in this mode, he is more or less kibble-less, which is lovely. You can also take his gun from his tank mode, slot it into this little thing on the fist. And he's got a nice big, rather disproportionate handheld weapon there. I mean, we've already seen that Shockwave can do immense damage to even the most powerful of Autobots, Ultra Magnus. Whether that's because he got the drop on him, because he managed to... Uh, sneak up on him in the guise of long arm or whether it's just because he's a Decepticon and the Decepticons in animated seem to be universally much more powerful than the Autobots don't know yet we really haven't seen what Shockwave is capable of in combat yet other than a brief encounter with Blur where he nearly crushed him of course he did end up crushing him later just not with his bare hands or claws as it were and they're just minor little details as well. I love the way these things flip up and become horns. They look like communicators on long arm. And just the way the, the arms come up here. Just so he's got a slightly more imposing stature. It's so clever and so wonderfully designed. This is a prime example of everything that's good and admirable about the animated line. It is stunning. And if you're a Shockwave fan, then this is a must-have. It really is. The character is portrayed wonderfully. It's an excellent toy. Very playable. Looks wonderful. I really can't think of a bad thing to say about it, barring the crappy instructions that came with it. And it's a damn good thing as well. This is my last treat before auto-assembly. I'm not buying any more Transformers until auto-assembly after this. But, good God, if this is the one that's got to keep me entertained until then, pff, don't care, to be quite honest. He is beautiful.